just for 10 years. I went to the service. In six months, I was a paratrooper. In nine months, I went to a school for NCOs. I got out of the army. I came home. My old lady was my wife for one year. She got pregnant with me. Remember? Puerto Rico. I left from Puerto Rico to Hawaii. And right there, I began a rendezvous with destiny. I got my rendezvous with destiny, my rendezvous. So from Hawaii, I went to Vietnam as a shotgun. Special Forces, they were training, they were training okay. the Vietnamese and the Indian people. They used to be indicted. Uh, I don't remember the name, but I couldn't train. So I went to Vietnam, and I met a guy. His name is still alive. His name is John Hayes. We need that on tape. John Hayes. We need that on tape. Sí, ahorita que lo entrevisten, comience con todo eso. Para que no repita, ahorita lo vamos a tener todo en 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 video. Ya lo tiene. Vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar la entrevista. Le iba a decir. Antes de que comencemos, prefiere las preguntas en inglés o en español? O cómo se va dando. Vamos a español, inglés. Inglés. Ya que en inglés es lo que quiera. Entonces, si no puedo explicarlo en inglés, claro. Yo puedo explicarlo o más bueno, ¿ok? Claro que sí. Vamos para adelante. Tiro el arena, bilingüe. Y la otra pregunta, cuando nos refiramos a usted, quiere que digamos Otero Barreto o Otero solamente. Ya está Otero Barreto. Otero Barreto, perfecto. Otero fue mi padre. Barreto con el mar. Perfecto. Le voy a subir el micrófono. Pues yo también, aquí me tengo también con voluntarios. I don't need no papers. Digo, I got everything in my computer. My computer is as good as the guy that escaped from the United States, the went to Russia. You know that guy? Yes. What's his name? Ah, sí, sí, Edward Snowden. Snowden. Yeah. 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 Snowden. Snowden didn't fight for the United States. He escaped. I fought for the United States. I didn't fight for Puerto, for, for Puerto Rico. That's the beginning. Yes, yes. We're rolling. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Ok, vamos a mover el micrófono para arriba un poco. ¿Tú eres latinoamericano? Sí, soy yo de, de, de Monterrey, México. Él habla portugués. ¿Y español? ¿Tú conoces a Pele? Pues no lo conozco, pero tiene el mismo apellido que yo. ¿También Pele? Ajá, ajá. Lo nacimiento. Es el mismo apellido que, que, que tengo yo. Play your I know, I agree. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Hanks, uh, can you sit down? Yes. Maybe? So, if you have any comments or any questions that you would like to just give me one of these. And there's another pen that I have to put there. Oh. Take that one. There's okay. a pen right there. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm ready. So whenever you're ready, we'll get started. Okay. 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 Estamos listos. So, al principio vamos a empezar a hablar de su familia primero. Voy a leer un un pequeño texto que tengo que decir al principio y luego comenzamos. Porque va a pasar con mi familia. Vamos a empezar hablando de su familia. Nada más tengo que decir algo al principio. Okay. Si quiere, si quiere que que pare, tú vas a. Claro que sí. Okay, ya se ve. Okay, so uh, good morning. Good My morning. name is Vinicio Cinta. Today is July 6, 2017. We are in San Antonio, Texas, at the Henry V. Gonzalez Convention Center. Uh, we are going to do an interview with Mr. Jorge Otero Barreto for the Voices Oral History Project. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Otero Barreto, for granting us this interview. Uh, please know that if there's a, a, at any point you want to take a break or you want us to stop the camera, feel free to let us know. 
If there's any question that you would like to skip or move on, uh, just let us know and we will, we will move ahead with the interview. Do you, uh, let, do you let me to, to, to change what I'm talking? Okay, go ahead, I'll explain to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yes, if, if at any point you want to take a break or stop the interview, just let us know and we'll stop the camera. Okay. Uh, as, we, uh, as, as we've said earlier, this interview will be housed at the Neri Lee Benson Latin American Collection at the University of Texas. So uh, we're going to start talking about your background, about growing up in, in Puerto Rico, in Vega Baja. Okay. So what can you tell us about your, uh, your childhood growing up? Okay. I was born April 7, 1937, in Vega Baja, Puerto Rico. My father's name is or was Eloy Otero, deceased. He wanted me to be a general. My mother argued with my old, old man. She wanted me to be a doctor. Since uh, April 7, my mother sent me to school. I graduated from first grade with four years old and then jumped, me, jumped to fifth year. That my mother pushing me. She wanted me to be a doctor. I didn't, I didn't want nothing. I didn't know nothing. But across the ages, I joined the army. But I go back. My mother, Crispina Otero Bajeto, she had seven girls. I became the eighth, the first son of the family. I was a toy for my, for my sister. They were taking care of me, blah, blah, blah. So that went away. I went to the University of Puerto Rico in 1955. I went to high school. I was boxing. I was playing basketball. Chair to put those papers yes, on so the spray next to you. It's just making a little, little scraping. Oh, yeah. Oh, all my panels in the high school. Oh, está parada la cámara. Oh, okay, okay. Dos, dos un segundo. Para que no tenga que estar agarrando las las las, las toallas, vamos a ponerle una servilleta aquí. Digo una una silla. Entonces, sí, sí, aquí so puede poner can, las toallas para que no las tengan que estar deteniendo. Okay, okay. Okay, please continue. Okay, so you, uh, you were saying uh, high school. Okay, but I go back. When I was 12 years old, I used to go escape from my mother. I went to the countryside, all over, caves, rivers, streams. I don't know why. Well, I was in love with the nation. I wanted to be in the mountain, the mountain, okay? So I think that God decided what I was later. I began my destiny. I had a, a rendezvous with destiny. I didn't know it. I went to the field, I was playing basketball, all the stuff. I went to the university. I met that lady at the age of 15, my wife, Tomasa Bojana Rodriguez de Otero. Okay? So I saw that girl, that little girl over there. I look at her. I said, she's going to be the mother of my child. I was just thinking. Okay? So, I finished medical school. All the, the basic subject, plus I was expert in chemistry, all the stuff. Because I was prepared to be a doctor because my mother wanted a doctor, not me. My father wanted me to be a soldier then. I finished the, the university. I went to my mother. She was with me. I told my mother, Mama, 
I want to marry that girl. So she stay here while I go to Spain. My mother got mad, real mad. You fail me. I want you to be a doctor. And why are you doing that to me? She said, mother, I lost that girl. So you got a space in, my, in, my, in our home. She said, no. If you don't go to Spain, I don't want to see you no more. So I told my mother, Mama, go to hell. Do you remember that? And she told my girlfriend, he's no good. My mother wanted to be, to make a doctor. So after thinking, she was crying, I was crying, I went volunteer to the army. That, that, that's the beginning, more or less, of the rendezvous. Argument with my mother, uh, my sisters, I left that behind. I joined the army, 15 September, 1959. Uh, you, you mentioned going to Spain. Yeah. Uh, why? To be a doctor. I, I have pre-medic. So, so you so had I, finished? I had to go to Spain. My sister were going to pay. It was expensive. So that was what was missing to finish medicine, to become a doctor. Because my mother wanted, want, or she wanted to be my, my, my angel. She wasn't my angel. I had my own angels. And that was the thing. So, volunteer, 12th September 1959. I went to Fort Buchanan and uh, took the test, they told me, you go to the army in two more days. I escaped from there, I came home and talked to her. They could have sent me to Fort Jackson. I don't know what is Fort Jackson, I don't, I don't know nothing. Because during my time in high school, all the people, they were, they were joining the National Guard and they were getting paid. But I wanted, I wanted to be a player, not a soldier. But I used to run 2,000 meters. I used to box. I was a catcher in the world. I wasn't thinking about the army. I didn't want to be nothing with the army. That's the, the beginning, the onset, right? So I saw my girlfriend, my wife. I went back. Next day, they were sending me to the United States. They had to. to to pass in front of my town. When I left for Buchanan, I was crying. So before I left, a first sergeant, a Puerto Rican, asked, how many people in here got college? I said, I do, pre-medic, OK? Go over there and dig a hole six by six. He was teaching, he would, I don't know, hating me or, or teasing me. I said, move out, god damn it. So I said, damn, this, this situation is not too good. I went over there, I dug the, 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 the fox. Later, that was the foxhole. And Mukanda was nothing. What for? Who, who's in charge? Who is the, 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 the great man over here? You are nobody. You got college. Don't, don't come over here to talk about that shit. I left. Where is uh, Holando? Holando, born in United States, but his mother was Puerto Rican. She died. And John Pinch, back and forth. Then you arrange the forward. Okay. I reached for, uh, for Jackson. It was cold. It was snowing. The first time I see the, the snow, all that stuff, I say, you made a mistake. Your mother was, was right. You insult your mother. You are going to pay for this. Okay. I was th my thinking. That's what I got to hear. So I pushed over there and I, 
our, our trembling, uh, I couldn't run to our, I was hating the, the snow. Well, I had to take it because I pick it up. But, but on my own set, I took basic, I took advanced training in Fort Jackson. So the sergeant told me, you are Silapi Puerto Rican. The, the, the NCO, they used to push the, the young people to find out if they got the, the ability. Why you say that? You were college, you don't need it. You took basic and you were so and so. Because the guy was a real tall guy, was talk, talking English, who was looking for persons that wanted to be paratroopers. I raised the hand, I went over there. About 50 more people, he, he had about 20 more people, so they had formation. I talked to, to that gentleman, so he told me, now you are going to be in jail. Sergeant Ramos, the late Sergeant Ramos. Now you are going to know what is the army. I told him, you are a sloppy fat guy. You can run. Now I'm going to be a paratrooper. I, when I finish the school, I'm going to, to bring smoke on you. So we start running, and they got a, what they call a guidon. The guidon is, a, is they got the, the flag. I used to see that many times. So they had a formation. And I, as the, the paratrooper, I want to be your guidon. So he gave me the guidon. Come here. Okay. Forward march. On your left, can jump, airborne, so good, PT. And on your right, can run, leg, leg. They were the paratroopers. I kept it there. I went about five miles, and then I took the guy doing this. Up front, when we came back, he told me, you are going to be a good paratrooper. But that guy told me that was sloppy, okay? So, uh, basic, advanced training, that four months, on February 1960, I was in a job school, okay? I had three pairs of fatigues. That was what I had. They told me in the school, you have to change fatigue three times a day. Three times, well, in the morning, I got dressed with, with fatigue, went over there to the, to the fire base, came back, I had to change at 12 o'clock. I went to, and uh, the third time, all the clothes was dirty. I had to wash all the clothes by hand. The next day, it was wet. But then they say, it doesn't matter. Destruction is that you have to change three times. So, I began to learn, okay? He wanted to see me changing fatigue. I went through that. At the end, at the end of the ocean, I would stop to flow. That's what I thought. So I made my, my first jump on August. July, February, April, April. I was born on April. I married my wife on April. I went to school, to job school, I feel So I was thinking, man, I have to jump out. So they used to enter the plane. The first guy that entered the plane, he got to be the last one. And the last one, he got to be the first. So I decided to be the last one. I went and picked my parachute. When we entered the plane, I was the last one, the first one, I was the first one to exit the plane. I didn't know that. I was laying. They gave the command. Stand up, hook up, check equipment, sound off for equipment check. And they had the biggest guy at the end. They had two legs, right? and green. 
de fuerza alguien, Juan en Esper, está un dedo, estoy un dedo. Go, that's why I make a night jump. I couldn't see nothing. But I was supposed, as an exit the plane, to, to go in this way. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, shade the canopy. But I didn't come for. I used to go over there with the plane for check, check canopy, the canopy and the a little parachute to sell. I used to go out, went to the check the canopy. <laughs> check the canopy, okay. That's a joke, I don't know about that joke. But it was really like that. The first time that I become a paratrooper, because they got five jumps. I made the five jumps, and there was a guy over there that was teasing me for the work in the company. Because if you quit job school, they got the steel helmet and the, another piece. You know, the, the helmet from the Marines. The guy that quit, he put that, that helmet without nothing across his chip. I am a quitter. He had to walk all over for coming. I, with, hey, get out of my way. Hey, wait. Was, I was not a quitter. I kept in the school. At the end of the ocean, they had all kinds of officers, captains. Those old soldiers, generals, they could run. Oh, they were, if you see the wings. My wings, I am my wings. Because that guy, my platoon sergeant, was talking to me. And he asked me, how are you doing? Okay, sergeant. Where did you come from? I say, I come from Puerto Rico. From where? From Puerto Rico. He grabbed me, my chin trap. I say, Pepo Rico. Where you come from? Puerto Rico. I, I couldn't understand Pepo Rico. Pepo Rico, he pulled me and threw me on the, on the ground. And he stepped me on my back with a jump boot, push up. I was going down, he had his boots in, in my back, up, up, about 10 times. Then I said, you made the big mistake, is now. You began when you went to to Vegabaja, went to the army. I I want to kill that guy. It's, because he slamming in my face. So I was thinking, well, if you fight that guy, too stronger than he is, I will be strong, they put you in jail. I changed my mind. No, stay here. At the end of the school, that guy, he came to me and told me, you are a real paratrooper. You are a person with guts. I, I'm, I'm glad that you are one of my members. I was picked as the best paratrooper of that unit. 2,000. 280 finished the school. Quit for reasons I don't know. So I became a paratrooper. I came to Puerto Rico, I married my, my girlfriend. We didn't have a house. My mother didn't want me in her house. Her father didn't want me. It was she and me, young. I was, that was in 19, when we got married. Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Remember that I left. I left the army September fifty-nine to September twenty-one, sixty-one, nineteen fifty-nine to sixty-one. That two years. You know what? I was a member of a unit that was supposed to invade Cuba. I was in that in that unit. 82nd Airborne Division. They are preparing Cubans from Venezuela, the Fort Campbell. They are preparing people, paratroopers, 
and the United States was supposed to, to give a airstrike. Kennedy was the president. Kennedy was ready. Uh, the Russians were moving rockets to Cuba. And the same thing that there is a, how do name? Trump. He was also a, a, a young Trump. He went and told Russia, if you move from this point, I'm going to blow, up, blow Russia out. That was it. A real serious moment. So somebody, they say the CIA changed the plans. They changed the, the, the tactics. And Kennedy failed that mission. That was a young uh, Fidel Castro. He wasn't Chihama Etra. So I was I was prepared to go with the Cubans real young, because I was a soldier. That one is a soldier. A soldier is a person that he takes some training. Some soldiers are good, are in between. But in my mind, I start thinking, you are a good soldier. People used to go to the chow line, mock in the line, not me. I used to, on my turn, to go to the chow, to the vessel. Well, the time is running, the time don't stop. So I said, you, you are a good soldier. That, that sergeant, that told you to stop his soldier, I went looking for him, to fall Jackson. He wasn't there. But I'm going to see coming, for me, she's coming, you know. My old lady was in Hawaii with me. That guy, at six years later, he was in Buchanan. The, the one that said that was sloppy soldier, Hamos. I saw that guy. He was the sloppy. I was a paratrooper. I had one trip to Vietnam. I was sharp. I went to Buchanan because she was uh, in need of the ID card. I saw that guy. Hey, you sloppy sergeant. You sloppy sergeant. For the reason, Hamas. I go forward, okay? So he paid the mistake. Because I went to Bucana and said, You are not a soldier. Go back to Vietnam. I was in, uh, in, in Hawaii. They had a beautiful, outstanding. Number one, Yuri, the 25th Division from Hawaii. The best by test. They had an outfit that they called Wolfhounds. I was a Wolfhound. From Hawaii, before she uh, went to Hawaii, I went first. Remember, they re enlisted in 1961. That's what you were asking. I left the army September 2161. Okay? Take note. September. September, October, November, and December. 26th and out. Three months I had to re enlist. She got a small house waiting for me. We got together. I didn't see my mother. However, my father. Went crazy about my, my my wife. He always stood next to my to my husband. I mean, to my father. Many years later, she was taking care of my father and my mother. She became my mother girl and my father. That's in between, okay? So, go to Thailand. Thailand is a is a next to Vietnam. With that, the uh, Vietnam, North Vietnam, South Vietnam, all the way down to the left, you got Laos. To the north, you got another country. Thailand made contact with uh, I got to look. 
It's uh, some four different countries. Cambodia? Malaysia. Cambodia. Okay. I went to Cambodia later. I went to Laos later. I was trained as a, as a soldier in Thailand. And Burma was to the north. So from Hawaii, they created a platoon. They called a platoon. Remember the old west? They got a person, hundred horses, with one man on the right, with Winchester. They copied that from, from the old west. So I became a door gunner, free gun, and 60 machine gun. I make a book with it. And the shoppers, they got on, on the floor like a piece of metal that move. So I hook that uh, bird. I got it along my waist, my, 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 my chest. I used to go to the ski of the shopper. I call that the monkey belt, my creation. I create my proper belt, monkey belt. I used to go to the floor, I hook, I extend it, I extend it, I went to the ski. Okay, from the, from the floor to the ski, I went down there. I had my 60 machine gun, free gun. Later, they had a stand. I had the free one and 60 machine. I used to go down there on the ski. I used to go in this way. I had two magazines on my left pocket in case I had a bullet. But I was down there, I had a smoke, red, yellow hook to a piece of a belt. Before, I used to take the pin was ready to go because I was supposed to mark the position. Okay. We're going this way. This is 12 o'clock. Pilot go there. Pilot go over there. Shotgun go over there. Crew chief go over there. In other words, that's a clock. We are flying at 12 o'clock. The pilot can see 12 o'clock at 1 o'clock. He can be looking at 2 o'clock. So he has to, to stay 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and the other pilot, 11 o'clock. I was supposed to cover 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9, 4 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. I can see 6 o'clock. That's why I created the monkey bird. I'm back to Vietnam. So the crew chief was, was uh, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Okay. I, I beg your pardon. No, please. I apologize for interrupting. Would it be possible to unbutton these top yeah, two yeah. buttons? Yeah. And that way we can just hide the wire. I live in Vietnam now. I know what I did. I know what I created. I know how many I kill. I kill everything that walk wrong or challenge me. Because I was willing to kill. I was also willing to die. I didn't have no choice. I think actually with that. Another one? Yeah, I think just so. Yeah, thank you. A king? A Kito. Oh, the boxer? For, no. Oh, okay. A, a friend of Oh, mine. yeah, okay. <laughs> well, he must be very handsome. If I may. Yeah, but when you first saw you, I know him. So, in other words, if, if a, the chopper is flying in this way, at 12 o'clock, one day he banks over there, that 12 o'clock. You see, friend, 12 o'clock, that is 12 o'clock. That was prepare, preparing the onset of the Hamburg Oriqua. But I'm not Hamburg Oriqua. 
I, I, I got to, I, I want to be the American Rambo. Because I challenge Rambo 1, Rambo 2, or Rambo 3, I challenge that guy. I want to see him. I got, I got my dice. You come watch, shoot dice. I want to shoot first. Seven. Eleven. Seven. Eleven. You think of Rambo. Where is Rambo? Who is Rambo? Rambo, Rambo. Who is that Rambo? I am the Rambo. Not Puerto Rican, not. I am Rambo. A Rambo. If you don't believe me, other people will tell you. They know me. They come in looking for me. So I got the right to be the real Rambo. After I finished that uh, preparation to be another, another thing, not a soldier. I was growing. We are flying to drop the 7th Vietnamese Regiment, the best that I had. We dropped those people, North Vietnam, United States, they were with the 7th Fleet at the China Sea. That's another story. I got the story. I got the document. What really happened? The commander was a Puerto Rican. We were flying, and they shot with and, and fit the machine gun. I hit the pilot right in his heart. The, because they changed. He said, the pilot, he, he handed in the chopper. The other one, he just looking. But when they changed, this one, clap, and he takes the I was behind the, the pilot at that time. The blood came to my feet. I had to take the pin and pull it back. I was dead. That was 1964, before the United States attacked Hanoi. Way before. Because I was training in Philippines. I was playing in Thailand, I was trained in Burma, but that they begin, they go later, I'll tell you the, the story. I decided, I decided to make my monkey boat. Everybody went to see me, Frank, general, that was in charge in Vietnam. You remember Westmoreland? Westmoreland. He came to my unit asking for me to be his pawn. Okay, he used to fly with one platoon ahead. He wasn't in the center. I said, no. I want to be always, always at the front. I can be next to you. But he told me, let's try. I'll try. I was with a guy who was about six, seven flight, but I quit. That time I quit. No action. He was inside a bunch of choppers. They are shooting artillery fire. They are bombing with uh, F1. So I went back to any platoon that wanted me. No generals. No generals. So. We went back. August 5th, United States attacked Hanoi. I was flying North Vietnam. I had a, a, a mouthpiece. Yeah, I could hear a conversation. They were talking about where they say, We attacked Hanoi. I was in North Vietnam in the chopper. We attack Vietnam. 100% alert. Alert. I'm on the other side. That's the beginning of the, of the war. That's the beginning. The real one. Because I was in Vietnam as an undercover war. I had tried to be pension and compensation. But any person during my time, September 59, okay, 
September 62, 3, and 4, then he had no, no right for pension compensation. I, I am a service officer for veterans. I see a guy with three days, and he could, okay, continue. That happened, and when we're coming back, a phantom jet was flying about 15 clicks from me, but a MiG, a MiG-21, spotted my chopper. I, I am at 3 o'clock. We're flying 12 o'clock, so I detected that plane flying for 3 o'clock going to Daniel Crow. I gave you a left, and the chopper said, don't worry. He stopped was holding in place, holding in place. The plane came from the east. He went down. He shot a rocket to my chopper. Went over. My pilot, I remember that guy was a great pilot. It started rain, went down, went up, like six seven. And that plane is so fast that cannot maneuver. So the chopper got the advance. So it was the Mekong River running from that place. The pilot told me, I go down all the way down. So he went down all the way down, hovering place. That plane was behind our ass. But he shot about four rounds of mist. Then we had to counterfly. Counterfly it, you know that the river go around like this. It, that's, it, that's called a flight counterflight. That what they say. That crazy guy hit a tree and he got killed himself. That's in my mind. That happened to me. That's for real. I remember the day. So after that, I, I came back to, to Hawaii. Uh, ju just one thing before before you you move on to that. So this happened when uh, this was uh, in in the days or in the weeks surrounding the, the attack on Hanoi. Just to place it on the timeline, this last story. Well, my story is in the way I see it. That's a question, and you cannot explain to me what you want. Say again. Um, uh, le decía que si esto fue porque estaba hablando del ataque en Hanoi. Fue en esa, en esa... Oh, yeah, okay. the same day. Okay. What happened, the 5th August, I'm flying close to, to Hanoi. I'm dropping Vietnamese people. United States had a plan. They wanted to make the Vietnamese people to fight their war. But they made a mistake. They made a big mistake. Because we lost our war for that reason. I'm going to explain to you later in the specific. So I came back to Hawaii. My wife took one baby with four months in Hawaii. My, my, my wife got pregnant. I got Ivan, Ivan, second Hawaiian kid, but she was pregnant. I want you to pay attention to this, because this is it's not a picture. This is the real thing. She was the person that suffered all my pain more than me, I know. Got one kid, four months. I got a picture of my kid, now 53 years, that he came to Buchanan in Puerto Rico because the general, you remember the general, uh, Joseph Anderson. Anderson. Three-star general. He came to see me. But during the on the cover war, I got all those papers over there. A sergeant just like me, younger than me. He was a two sergeant. So I but what happened that he was not oh, who expert in his in demolition, what airports in movie trap, mine, all the two. His name is John Hay. That's my son. I can talk with that guy. He's my son until I die. You know that guy. Sir. That gentleman, I left from him for 45 years. And he always was writing to me, writing to me. I, I got all kinds of letters. I got 
cubano pedeo, I'm going to give it to you so you make uh, you read it and you find out and tell them the truth. That happened, Kentucky, another baby, three babies. She got pregnant in Kentucky. I was one year in Kentucky. I had a confusion. Listen to this ahora. I was, I became a member, of, I was paratrooper for 90 seconds, but real quick. I, I was changing paratrooper unit but all over. From Hawaii to the 5th Division, the best ground division, the best. They were well prepared. They got Filipino, they got Hawaiian, they got uh, Big Island, they got the highest volcans, volcanoes in the world, Mauna Kea, Mauna Lea. I'm talking to you the truth. I, I used to train in Mauna Kea, in the highest volcano in the world. Cold at night, hot during the day. They had a mountain, I trained that mountain, that was called Oh My Aching Ass. <laughs> we had to go up shooting. I, was, I trained with that. I trained in the best places to be a good soldier. I played, I, I fight in Hawaii, Kahuko, Hawaii. I went to Kahuko, that was hell. Hell. The mountains that I called you before, okay. So I learned in Hawaii. I went to a sergeant school in Hawaii. I went to River Crossing with the 25th Division. They, they were the best river crossing, repelling, all the stuff I learned in Hawaii with Filipinos, Chinese, Japanese, all those people were in that, in, in that country. They were my friends. But I was just passing by. I was uh, learning. I learned, I learned. That happened. When I came to Kentucky the first time, I was, Pacho, I was with a company, first five or second infantry. Outfit. They had another outfit. I got the documents over there. Another outfit, also paratroopers, were in Kentucky. That was 1st Battalion, Fire First. I was 1st Battalion, Fire Dus. So they were getting ready to go to Vietnam. My old lady was pregnant in Kentucky. I told my old lady, I'm going to send you home, I go back to Vietnam. Remember? Papito, Ivan, Griselda, and Nidia. And Nidia was the, the fourth baby born in Puerto Rico. She told me, you got to decide. You go to Vietnam, get out of the army of me. El army or yo? I was in love with my old lady. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Happy landing. She was crying, all the stuff. So I requested permission to be with the fire first. They were Geronimo in the morning. Geronimo, Geronimo. In the morning, like crazy people. I began Geronimo. I was also pulling the same bullshit. We left to be part of another division, no division, a battle group, was 173rd Airborne Brigade Separate. They are the best paratroopers. From the 82nd, from the 101st, from Germany. So always I wanted to be the best, or at least be next to the best. I left. She, she came to Puerto Rico. And we got a, a, a girl. I didn't see that girl until I came back. I thought that I was going to die in Vietnam. Well, if you want to be the, the, the best, you have to take risk. 
you have to to have dignity. You have you need knowledge. There is not a single man or lady that they intelligence that don't exist. You have to learn knowledge plus knowledge plus knowledge plus knowledge blah 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 all the way down knowledge. You need knowledge. Because if you have knowledge, you solve any problem. And at the same time, if you had all kinds of knowledge, I had all kinds of knowledge. Repelling, river crossing, free condo, NCO Academy, everything. I was the only guy in Hawaii that were, that were getting paid because they had a test for officers. Okay? So I took it. So they were paying me 50 bucks. I was no officer. I was just a soldier that knew his shit. Patrolling, recon patrol, reconnaissance, area of recon, map. Compass. That's what you need. If you have knowledge, you need a map and the compass. Going further, I went to Vietnam with a 170 brigade. I was the only Puerto Rican in that unit. I got the papers over there. So, from Ancho, from first five or second to first. Five or first to f first, five or thir uh, third, four jobs for the best outfit. To the 173rd, fourth brigade. That is story. The first, that is real story. So I went with the fourth brigade. They were getting a bad time over there. So I went with well, where I worked about time. Do you know what I got? I got three, three purple hearts from that outfit. That should, that should be my outfit. I got three times wounded. The first time I was in a chopper who was making a, a combat assault. And when I jump out, I exit, I hit the ground, they had a bear trap. And I got a hook in the bear trap. I was a patrol leader. I told my people to hold. That was in Cambodia. And I got the, the written document. I got the medal. OK? I got the medal. The first one. The second medal was the 173. I was in a place close to Saigon. I was patrolling. 173. I was patrolling. I was in contact with the Viet Cong. Uh, we killed six people. I recovered five weapons. You know what gave me? Purple heart. Nothing else. That's still from me. However, they gave me the purple heart with nothing. Like a, you have a sandwich. Nothing in between. I always was receiving big Bit shit, I got wounded that day. What happened? Well, later, I know what happened. Because I was a soldier. How did you get injured that second time? I, be, I began writing to the Department of the Army. I got this, I got that, I got that, I got this. You got this, 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 you don't got that. Huh? But I want that because I got that. I got all my, all my medals. Well, this one in here, it's a bunch of bullshit. I got 14. I got 10. I got the document. This is here, another bullshit. I got five. I got the document. When they called to say he got four, it was on April, from September 1969 to December 15, that is not on record. I don't need that, but I got a good, a good mind.
very good. I get, you should have, you, you have to look for what they call, I told you, knowledge. 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 I told all my soldiers, you have to learn with knowledge. It's knowledge. I'm afraid to go to hell and back for you people. Anything that you do, I will do better than you. Don't dare do what I do. That was used to tell me. And they left. And they were just like me. Uh, so you were saying uh, in Saigon, that was the second Purple Heart with, with this? Close to Saigon. Close to Saigon. That, that was a Michelin plantation. That was a French plantation. That was bad. Guerrilla were over there. I went over there. I was smoking the way, and then I got wounded. But you see, I'm still alive. They got a war, 160 killed in the war. I still here. Cool. What's the second one? What? what the, Book of Magic, I got it. I'm too happy. The paper, the paper heart. I got each, each and every one, detail by detail. I was in, a, in that place. Está por ahí que. No lo tenemos ahorita. Rolando lo está leyendo, el libro. Ah, no, está bien. I got the first one, paper. The second one, where I killed six Viet Cong, recovered about seven weapons. I got a purple heart and nothing else. Who was in charge? Santa Claus? Trump? Or the Washington? That was me. But I'm looking for that because that's not correct. I was fighting for the United States freedom. I was expecting nothing from the United States. I was just a warrior. But to be a warrior, I got to explain to you why it's a warrior. That happened on a, the third one. I got at, at least what they call Bronze Star V device. But I got 40 kills. I got a bunch of people. They used to give me because all the no-win situation vision, that's what I call it. Everyone, or those missions, nobody wanted to take it. I was begging, please, give me good missions. I want to fight. Don't do that to me. Let me play in, in the jungle. That's why somebody asked me, why you did that? I don't know. Really, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to know. But, uh, I'm, saying what I'm saying to you because I'm proud to be Puerto Rican. If my people, Puerto Ricans, they fought in Korea. That was an abuse. They call him cowards too. When I went to the mainland, they, a guy came to me and said to me, hey, are you Puerto Rican? Yes. But he said, no, you can be Puerto Rican. You got hazel eyes. You are white. Many Times I had to argue to let them know I am not Tarzan. I just I am rock. You know who is Sian Rock? You know no. Sian Rock was the Second World War, a sergeant that was like me, like that. Do you remember that? That was Sian Rock. That was a magazine. He said that the one that I got now in Hamburg. You also the real rock. Because my people, my people, I got one guy that his brother, when I went in Vietnam, was uh, reading the, the magazine, rock, 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 rock. And he wrote to me that his youngest brother, he had uh, about 20 magazines, and he wanted to know the Rambo. So I wrote to him, I became the real Rambo. Not the real Rambo, the real. Uh, Science rock. They used to call me Jungle Jim. They used to call me Second to None. Oh my God. Those, every person, they call me the name. Rock. Uh, you got time? More time? 
Ok. Sí. ¿Necesita un, un break? ¿Ah? ¿Quieres no, no, no. Oh. Tu esposa está con mi esposa. Sí. Llámala y dile que, que coman lo que quieran. I used to take care of my people. I had to, to, to look for the welfare of my men, not for my, for my people. Because a good teacher, is a good teacher, if the student look like him, otherwise you are not a good teacher. You have to look for, for the people that are working for you. That's it. That was, that was received for payment. And I told them, anything that you do, I will do better than you. Don't dare do what I do. You know what happened? A little bit. Two colored guys, they came to my platoon from the mainland. They used to call it sh shake and bake. That was cool. Base in advance for to get done. They called it shake and bake. Those two colored guys, they came to my platoon. I told them, anything that you do, I will do better than you. They were, hey, Jim, what the fuck is that? I had my, my, my ears around my neck. That was our purpose. If you cannot beat the enemy, join him. You cannot be uh, beating the enemy if you know, don't join them. I got, one time, Five teams close to Leos. I was a mountain like this. I was up here. One team over there, two teams. Up here on top. You know why? That was a relay station. Because as a commander, I had to have contact at night to know. They're doing good. That one, well, that one was the relay station. At night, we had a handset. For example, I had the head, a patrol sergeant, it's one, two, three, four, and two things on reserve, close. At night, I used it, I explained to them the handset. Squash, shh. They got to answer. Shh, 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 shh. Two, you have to answer. Third, you have to answer. I had to answer. At midnight, I called them, they did not answer to me. I knew our problems. Well, it's midnight, I would have to, to climb to leave home for my team. Because one, two, and three answer. When I went up, I, I was shooting artillery fire. To the left, a distance of 500 meters, in case. When I went up, I found a terrible place. All six people killed. They cut their sexual instrument. They took two radios away from me. They had two radios. They had same people. They took all the clothes. When I went over the top of the hill, I said, well, it is time now. You have to play the same game. Different way. From now on, we are going to cut their head. Cut the ears. And we are even. I'm scared to say, I tell you the truth. One guy come to see me, his name is Morel. He was my expert. He was a sniper. He has been in the mainland, just in two reunions. Went to Vegaba to see me. I'm coming down to see me now. He's still alive. So my life began many years ago, still the same life. We're getting together. When we're together, well, we love each other. They're still alive. 
uh, this uh, that the incident you that one you're talking about when was that what to, to put it in the timeline what year was that you remember I gave you the position a mountain and the controller a team a team a team and a team because he was relation station every two hours I used to to call here, okay? Because the highest one. That was easy to me to make contact with him. But at night, that's different. At night, it's the same shit. With the difference, they had the responsibility to check each and every one. Shh. 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 I don't have to call myself. Shh. He used to answer that for five days. All the answers to me. That night, I mean, night. I not receive no answer. I imagine something happened. But I'm telling to you that I don't know if you want to, to to use it or not use it. I don't care. Because I'm not scared. They still alive and uh, they can put me in jail now, it's too late. If they put me in jail, they do me a favor. I will die in next day two weeks. <laughs> See, that's right. Do me a favor. I, I cannot kill myself. I'm proud of what I did. But if you, if you cannot be the enemy, join it. We have to be the, the same play. It's that like basketball. Five against five. NBA, they got the strongest guy to kick. Not to shoot, to kick, to put respect in the, in the court. That was, I'm talking to you, I'm like reading no paper. I got in sequence, if you want to ask any question for what I told you, ask me. I got to tell you the same thing, because I am not intelligent. I said, don't exist. No, people are intelligent and smart, ah, that's a bunch of bullshit. Because if you don't have knowledge, Knowledge. Sometimes, if that knowledge, people teach you something wrong. Take for the people tell you about what he think. Put the in the trash can. I pick the best, the best. I remember a, a Filipino, Gompa. I was a rookie. I just began a job school. And there are people over there teaching me, hey, look at that guy, he's a cherry, he never make it. And that man, Gompa, he came to me and he told me, don't pay attention to them. You are not like them. You are in the way that you do to it. You want to be part of it? Yes, I'm going to help you. Gompa. He told me what happened in Philippines. In the Second World War, uh, the Japanese, capture a bunch of people. That was a, a long walk. I was in that, in that bunch. That's why he told me I wasn't there. So as say he told me, he was in that march, and the Japanese were abusing, with the Filipinos included. A guy, Douglas MacArthur, left the Philippines. You know what he said? I shall return, and she returned. So I got, I got a good memory, but no intelligence. He told me that he was walking in that bunch of people, and there was a depression that he jumped. The depression went all the way down. The, the Japanese, they shooting down there, but they had to, to keep pushing. So I, what he told me, he went down, down there, and he found a dead body, a smelling bag that he was eating. That one, that <laughs> se, se comió muerto. I said, well, how you did it? I took my knife. I cut the outside. I looked for the inside. That's a good meat. I said, I would never do that. But he was my master, master Kung Fu. I have many masters, Kung Fu. So that happened, and uh, 
I went to Vietnam with the 173rd. Remember, I was in the first fire second. I was the first fire first. What the first fire third? I went from first to second. I was assigned to first fire second. The first was another outfit, just like me, but different outfit. Battalion. In the one third, uh, the first way or third, what they were taking people for fire those from fire first, the best to put it in the fire third. Okay? That was tactics, the best. And that one third became the first fire four, four brigade, one seventy third brigade. I ran every, everything in the airborne. Uh, with the three times, I explained to you the, the bear trap, I told you uh, close to Saigon, that they got a uh, French, that plantation. Okay, I, I fought in that one. Michelin? That on the south. The third one, I got, when I wrote, I got the paper, I got the date, so I got five paper hard. It took me 40 years found my matters. I got him. So I'm happy. I don't need that matters to be alive. I'm still alive. If they want to put me in jail, put me in jail. I'm going to, to die in two weeks. Do me that favor. I, I don't know. You know the difference between a scare, a scare English. I, I don't know that, that word, scare. If you are in your job, scare, you are going to, to be a regular writer. You have to be sure that you can be scared. It happened in any jobs. I was in the care, I am not scared. When I left the army, I was not happy. They sent me to a hospital for crazy people. I was retired from the U.S. Army, and John Pete at the end, so I go back. They retired me after I had my five wounds. You know what? I, I had just one purple heart. They fought two. I got in down there. I got my two front team. I want to see that Rambo, I mean, that Rambo. I want to be in smoke on him and who create that Rambo. Said Rambo is a bunch of bullshit. That Rambo is making American soldier like Rambo. A bunch of bullshit. I don't have to be a Rambo. I have to be a soldier. I go over there. Do you know Da Vinci? Okay. I read about Da Vinci. I went to Fort Jackson, 1959, September 15. I left from after the Cuba, United States province, of there. But in my mind, uh, I came to Puerto Rico. I uh, grew up, grew up. I, I looked for for more fight. Go to Hawaii. Went to Vietnam. I remember the meat. I remember the choppers, I remember 12 o'clock, one, two, everything's there. That's knowledge, okay? Continue and return to Puerto Rico. June 5, I live in Kentucky. All those offers, hotel, offer. I get those people, no sweat. I have returned to Puerto Rico, June 1967. Now it's going to be a surprise. June 1967, June 1966, my old lady told me or asked me, that's enough. I'm suffering a lot. A baby went to Hawaii, four months. A baby born in Hawaii. A baby came in Kentucky. 
in Kentucky, she got pregnant. I went to Puerto Rico. She was asking me, I can't support it no more. What, what are you going to do? I went back. I went back. I didn't want to hear nothing. No from officer. Westmoreland, Barsanti, San, all those guys, they had to respect me. Because I was a respectful person with the general. But no general was going to send my people to get killed because he wanted to. In Vietnam, those people that love me, they know who I am. I went 100% for recon, or recon too. I went crazy because I knew that we were the best by test. We used to, to fly back to Sally uh, Firebase. They were outside. When we were flying back, I used to go out of the, out of the chopper. Remember, I was in shotgun before. And I, I saw a, a, a pile of gear. I saw other people. I used to hang out on the chopper. Because if you stand in the door, in the door, and you lose battle, it got to suck you. But you got a handle. I used to take my rifle, or dairy, hang it there, and we used to fly around the compound. All those people over there, show off. I used to shoot. Brr, brr. The general got mad. You can do that. I can do that, why not? Two people got three meals in the fire base, breakfast. I ain't got no three meals. I got sea rations. Okay? Sea rations, beef steak and potatoes. Ham and llama beans. I remember all that bullshit. Uh, and then I was happy in the jungle. Many Americans, they had to learn from me. They're going for the mainland. They used to pick the sea rations and take peaches, okay? Fruit cocktail. Uh, uh, uh. Take it away. <laughs> Sergeant White, you cannot be eating fruit. How many lemon beans? White bread. That was a, a, a bunch of shit. <laughs> Crackers and cheese. They had to learn from me. If you don't like it over here, look for a new home. I don't need you over here. I don't need it. All the information is in the magazine that they say Puerto Rican Rambo. Hayes is there. John Hayes. So I was, with my platoon, we became one. I got a written document over there. The Supreme Warrior. That's my name. That's the name I give myself. Nobody gave it to me. I wrote the Supreme Warrior. Because before being a warrior, you have to be a soldier. Okay? You're a soldier. What you need is knowledge that you need. Esper or marmanship, but you have to be ready to, to die. Otherwise, I don't need you. I got a guy over there, and they, he was the, the governor of Pennsylvania. I got over there. He came to me. He was a sergeant, was president. He is the first United States Homeland Security in charge. I know that guy. I got the paper over there. I can show it to you. You know why? Because he came to me. I saw that guy smelling good. We could smell good. We, we could not use perfumes, soap, nothing. We used to, to stink like a pig. That, that was the way that I told my people. 
You can go to the jungle and start a spray. You will kill my platoon. Look for a new home. I don't need you. Get out. But oh, hey, see, I know hey. Get to my platoon. Me say, who is Saiyan Rock? I am Saiyan Rock. I'm looking for you. No, yeah? What do you need? I want to be a member of your platoon. Why you want to be a member? You don't know what you're expecting from this platoon. We are the best. We are killers. We don't have no heart. We don't, we don't give a damn. What mean? And we don't give a fuck. So he came to me, he said, oh, don't worry. I'm telling you in the way that, you, that, that it was. I'm going to say, oh, well, we are good people. No, no. She's Mexican, she's Israel. That was the way they wanted to be. So people respect the leader. He told me, Pope, give me an opportunity, okay? Remember, sometimes you go in an air assault, I got eight meters, air meters. None will be device. I got shut down one time. They give me a little pill. If you go, the people talking shit, he told me, if you are captured by the enemy, you, go, you become a POW, they are going to cut your Peter, they are going to take bamboo, put it under your finger, your, huh? what are you trying to tell me? To be scared? No, I don't know the word scared. So they give me the pill. If my chopper got shut down, I was supposed to look in my pocket, take the pill, and swallow it. Okay? I went through that. I told him, why don't you come to my platoon? But, but the Pennsylvania, what are you Cambridge. That guy will make a deal. You want to go, either you, you're right. I want to, to fight for my country. You, well, you fight for your country. That, that was, the president say that. It is not what you can do for you, for your country. I mean, we got a big assault combined, combined. Two platoons, my free coin, and we left, going to Laos. They're waiting for, for us, waiting. Tracer fire. If you're on the chopper and you look down there and they fire a tracer, it looks like a basketball. Well, coming up. I used to look. Many times they shot the, the chopper. I said, you are lucky. I'm talking to me. But I didn't have the opportunity to swallow that pill. I guarantee you that. It's my chopper for shut down. I was going to take that pill. They told me a bunch of bullshit. Who told you that specifically? Or at what point were you? My were company you? commander. He was always back, breakfast, lunch, beer. I didn't have that stuff. I was, I was happy over there, happy over there. So I came home June 1967. I told you that I left for Kentucky. I sent my, my wife to Puerto Rico pregnant for my four kids. Came home, I took 30 days leave in July. I was in my hometown, I was drinking, I was running around, blah, blah, blah. But she requested me to quit. She said, okay, you know, like that. Here, there, and there. When I came back, that was July, I was on 30 days leave. August. The second, I was destination for Canberra. Destination of first five others, my alma mater. But 
to the company. I was supposed to get out of the army 13 August 68. I remember I'm talking about August 67. That's what I hate. That, that little bracket. Leave from August to Fort Campbell. Supposed to be out of the army August 13. I got my papers over there. I got a 214 to prove it. Okay? Look for my platoons. I went to, to the first sergeant. Everybody was dead, missing in action. When I left, when I went with 173, remember I was, I was five of those. They were my partners, my brothers. But the information, Furano, Dojo, got killed. So my mind was used to that, okay? But for one man of my platoon killed, we killed. 40 people, including civilians, including everybody. Because they were in villages. They were covering the North Vietnamese army. They were north and south. But those people used to put the mines. So they gave me an order to take that village, give me the grid square, I take all the rest. I used to kill everybody. So we got a body count. I was the platoon sergeant, I was the platoon leader, I was the captain. So after the firefight, we got a body count. Body count. Sergeant, five. Eight. None. You were behind hiding. I had to, to split. Some of those people, they can have a, you know, a credit. I used to get Bronze Tabby device, unconventional metal. But every time that you go to, to a platoon, they're different people. They, they won't go because they have been forced to go. Or they go because they like to go for freedom. But the ones that they made contact with the enemy, they don't want to fight for freedom. That, that what I know, I was there telling you the truth. Nobody there to say what I'm saying. Yeah, th that's the way it was. The guy that came to my platoon, we got fire uh, assault it's got with me. The one that is the, the governor of Pennsylvania, he's still alive. That was the Homeland Security. We left the, the landing zone, went over there, we were receiving fire, gunfire all over the place. We, we land, we got about two or four kills at, at, at the beginning. I tell you, if I get shooting, blah, blah, blah. So he told me, Sergeant, I think that I go back to another company. You have to take one more time. Well, I told you, one more time. So we went another sort, and we didn't make no contact. So now you know. You are not what you think that you are, but that's for you. You are what I think about you. Now, I'm telling you that. You are asking me, I'm telling you, but well, you can think about me what you want to. Because I am not what I think that I am. I'm telling you my life. You're taking notes. I don't know where those notes go. I don't know. I don't care. But this is part of my, told you that there were, Remember what I told you? Rendezvous with destiny. I'm still fighting my destiny. The rendezvous is not finished yet. I'm 80 years old. I told you that born 7 April 1937. You know, this year, on April 7, I turned 80 years old. And you know what happened? On July 7, I turned 81. You want to hear it again? 7 April 1937. This year, on April, it was my birthday. Eight. 80 years. And July, 81 years. Two years in one, in one month. You know why? When I was born, I was born, 
remember that they had problems with my mother. I asked my mother to marry my girlfriend. But, but that happened. You know, that's my destiny. I was asking my mother, Mama, I am nine months, son, or six months. You are nine months in her belly, eh? nine months. I had April, I turned 80. April. May, June, and July, 81, because those nine months count plus the three months, 81. <laughs> that's, that's tomorrow. Huh? It's common sense. You do. <laughs> so every year, you, so far, I tend 80 and 81. I don't worry too much because next April, I got to be 83 and July 84. That, it looks like a joke. I learned that for the people from Thailand. So, um, how are you? How are you? Wait, we have time. What time? time? As long as there's one. Five more minutes. Okay. Uh, August 19, remember, I got channel 2, 9, 16, I see the boxing, I see the baseball game with the television. That's the way I am. My mind is that way. I have channel 2, channel 4. August 1967, I went to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Again, oh my God. I walk, walk over there, they put me in a rapper company, a Puerto Rican. Five more minutes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay? Because, because I finished. Have we finished already? Yes. What happened? No, no. Please continue. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I reached Kentucky August. I knew that she was asking me to quit. I did that and that. It means I was not going to quit. Maybe I quit. So I went to the mainland, they got information. I got a picture of the guy, I got a picture of the company, I got a picture of Captain Holland. I sent Captain Holland home the pine box. I sent that first sign to the pine box back to the mainland. I got the evidence. I'm talking, I got the picture and everything, okay? They got information. They sent me to a company again. Go to a company. And they had formation, they had about 18 to 20 black people. That happened to me before, but I will tell you the story later. Walk over there, formation. Roundsfield was the name. First sergeant. Roundsfield. If you want the picture, also I'll give you the picture. And the whole company. All the crew in that company. I got that. His company, hey, what? Report. He looked at me. Hey, you. I didn't come back too long for that model. I'm talking to you. I told him, fuck you. You can put in there. That was the real thing. He said, what? No, I don't go back to Vietnam. Why? You haven't been there yet. Who the hell you are? You are turning yellow. It means in Puerto Rican, in Spanish, you turn turning yellow, you turn turning a coward. How that guy going to call me a coward? I had two days in the company. The company, the company uh, clerk was a Puerto Rican from New York, Vargas. After that happened, I didn't see him no more. So I go to the company. I was teasing me. The yellow, Puerto Ricans, blah, blah. Quiet. That night, I went to the top seven NCO club. I had many medals already. That guy ain't got no single one, but was teasing. He was looking for something. I gave it to him. So I go to the club, I sit down, and the West uh, brought a, a drink to me, because I was there before, they knew me. So he came to my table. 
¿Qué le voy a decir? Well, well, well. The fucking Puerto Rican. That the best punch. I was a boxer. I hit that MF. MF. Right in this eye, a blue part of this eye. They got what they wanted because I was going to go to jail. That happened. I sneak out to the company. Next morning, that guy, his glasses. We are like that. So I walk over there, I told, you want some more? Who is the coward, you or me? He didn't talk to me. He moved away. He knew that he made a mistake. I go second floor, because I was a platoon sergeant. I got my own uh, uh, bed, everything, about television. They were living good life. In Vietnam, they had no room, I didn't have television. He used to go to, to home at the formation. They had a Captain Holland. Captain Holland, I got a picture. In the book, I got the picture, Captain Holland. Pelshin. Uh, his father was a great grandfather. Of American general. All those people, all those people that died in Vietnam, all those people I sent them home. I'm telling you, if you want to know, I'm telling you what I know. I got nothing to regret. Nothing. Too late. This is too late now. But I, I know my God. I know that what I did, I didn't have no chances. Kill. Or die. They sent for me and my room. Vargas, San Otero, the old man wants to see you. It was a name that I had, Captain Holland. I said, okay. I'll be down there in a few minutes. I got up, went to his office. This is the real story. Come in, sweetheart. Another one. I had a Cochrane, that boots, speak chain. I hit that door and blew a shit out of that door. I went inside, I kicked the MF about 15 times. You have to respect me, MF. I made another mistake, two mistakes. One the day before, the one here. They called Provost Marshall, they came down over there. They took me, uh, put the cuff, and uh, asked me what happened. I told then what I told you. That's a real story. So I went upstairs. I said, now you waste in the Amazon. You have to quit. They want to quit you. They are going to sentence you. They want to be in jail. Remember, I told you my old lady requested, but that's it. They forced me to go back to Vietnam. But I would not go to Vietnam. I was going to be in prison, maybe 100 years. I went to my room, I started thinking, well, you don't have no choice. You have to make another trip. What I wanted, that she didn't want it. OK, Vargas. Please, sign a 1049. I got everything in my mind. 1049 is a document that you volunteer to go back to Vietnam. A 1049. las cosas como son. A 1049, and a Vargas finished the 1049. I signed it. I used to like people in the, in the, in the, in the, in the boonies, the the son of boondocks. Uh, they made a mistake, I said, no, a second mistake. I went back to the, to the door of the captain. Come in, please. Oh, these people learn real fast. 
oh my God, I should be the captain in this company. I went in, I told the gentleman, please, before, sir, San Otero's reporting. He was a little, you know, black eyes. He signed it. He told me, anyway, to want to have a call marshal. He submitted, okay? But I walked with a document by hand. I went to the battalion commander. I moved. I go to the brigade commander. I moved. And I went to the division commander. You can put the name too. I can give the name. General Balsanti. I got the documents. He pinned down two civil star medals in my chest, that guy. But then he forgot. I want to tell you how rapidly. I go to the division commander. They had a black lady over there. I was sitting down over here. She came to me, smiling, and she asked me, may I help you? Different, or two guys, or two white, and black. So they well, I came here to, to see the old man. Do you want a cup of, uh, cup of coffee? Yes. He ran over there and brought me the coffee. I was thinking, but what different is between the company commander and the first sergeant and these ladies over here? You see, they're different. I was gone, trying to find out. So, 10 minutes later, he was walking, a short guy, about five feet, uh, two inches, all sloppy. I used to be always in that way when I went, always. Knowing the boonies, and the boonies had gongo boots. Son, may I help you? Yes, sir. Follow me. I jump out, I move to his left. That was what I learned in the, in the academy. The general, if you better go here and run and open the door. I still remember that. I opened the door. He entered across the door. Challenging. I went to go to jail. Come in, son. I went in. He had two cigars. He was born in Sicily, Italy. He came to United States at the age of 14. He could speak no English at all. That's what he told me. He used to fight Puerto Ricans in New York. They had a war between Puerto Rico and Italian. That's what he told me. Later, I found out that was true. OK. I explained to him exactly what I told you. What happened? There, there, there. He looked at me. Really, you want, want to go back to Vietnam? Yes, sir. Wait a minute. The telephone, in 10 minutes, all my, my file came to him. He written the file. You better go home. The same thing happened to you happened to me. That's why he say. So I will listen. If you cannot listen, you cannot talk. Before you talk, you got to listen. That, my mother told me that. People, you talk. They don't listen. And when you are talking, you know what they're doing? Trying to answer to you. A person that does that is, is stupid. I listen to everybody. I listen. Then it might turn. If I was listening, I can't request. Because it, you are talking to me. You are talking about uh, Holland, uh, da, da, da. I see you, that you don't move. You are, you are listening. That's the way it should be. Listen. And then ask. Are you having asked me? Not to make the question. None. Look what happened. The old man told me, you want to go home? No, sir, I don't want to go home. We say, why not? Because as a soldier, I was a good soldier. As a tiger, I was a good tiger. He asked me, what that means? What that means? To kill a tiger, you have to learn the skills of the tiger. And a soldier. You know that I told you before, when the people got killed at the mountain, 
okay? A promise is a promise. And we made a promise. From now on, we will kill everything that walk and crawl. We, are, we cannot hesitate. If you hesitate, you are it. In Vietnam, you cannot hesitate. If you see a woman, pru, pru, pru. If you got a bunch of people in top of, of the elephant, pru, pru, pru. They are their land. They were my land. They had the children all trained. They used to call to sell Coca-Cola in the south. The people, I call it Rinf. Rinf was a real echelon model folk. People that used to stay behind. That's a Rinf. Real echelon. And no, I was not a killer. I was a warrior. But why? I learned from the tiger. Don't take a weapon and go to India and start killing tigers, OK? They're going to eat you. <laughs> That's all your mind. You have to learn from the tiger. You have to learn the skills of the tiger. Then you become another tiger. So I learned from the Viet Cong. I was listening. I was watching. I learned from them. With the difference that I got more benefit than that tiger. That tiger didn't have phantom jets. That tiger didn't have 155, 105. I got all the stuff, OK? Plus, I knew their skills. I had it. I was lucky. But I became a tiger. And my soldiers, they, couple guys, they were there, they, Talk about the tiger, the tiger, the tiger. Where the tiger, the supreme warrior. I was a teacher. I was a fighter. I was a father. I was a grandfather. I had all those titles, and they definitely understood, and they still love me. Pancho, do you know Holmes? Who is Holmes? He was going to be a, a professional football player, but he decided to give up the contract and go fight in Vietnam. That my witness, because he knows that guy, and many more. See, I feel, I mean, I'm going to cry. I, I cannot cry. But in my mind, just in my mind, why that, that gentleman, a rookie, football league, four million, decide to go and fight for freedom. The governor of Pennsylvania wanted to call for freedom. One flight, second flight, he quit. Another guy that I knew in Kentucky, Muhammad Ali, Kashu Clay, refused to go. He was tense five years in jail. And he died recently. A good person. Love his God. I didn't have no God. I had nothing. No, me and the circumstances. Me and my mother. I say that because that guy asked me this question. What are you going to do? Are you going to kill them? Holland and, and Stanford? He asked me. I said, sir, I am an American fighting man. I'm responsible for my actions and dedicated to the principles that make my country free. If I become a prisoner of war, I am bound to give name, rank, service number, and date of birth. Nothing else. I will try to escape and help others to escape. That is code of conduct. I've been out of the army for 60 years. It's still the computer. Okay? I got accent, I'm Puerto Rican, broken English, so I don't care. I'm telling what my heart tells me to say, OK? No, they are going to kill themselves. They are sloppy soldiers. They are, they are not soldiers like me. I want to be sure when they, they kill, both of them can kill, I recover the body. So I send it back because the enemy Take the bodies, that's it. He began to laugh. OK. I have said the 1040, 1049. 
you are well, my command. I want to call the company commander. He cannot look at you. I hit the guy, I, the, the company commander, I hit the first sergeant. So that gentleman make me a favor because is I go to court. Maybe they kill me in jail. I don't know, but I'm guessing. I don't like to guess. You are my soldier now. So I owe to that, that, that action. Do you know what happened? I left December 67. All that bunch of information just with the one year. 1967, one somebody tell you, fighting in Vietnam. Three purple heart, three purple heart, double and star be device. I just returned to Puerto Rico, 60, 67. Go to the mainland, and the same year I left to Vietnam for four come to Kentucky with the 101st. February 1968, when I reached Kuchi, was the 25th Division unit. I reached that division. Everybody knew me over there. Or the old people. But I came back to the same area. Kushi. The third offensive began. People say one thing, I say another thing. 27th December 1967. Okay. The United States Embassy, they were smoke on them. They killed 80 officers in Saigon. To me, that the real, because I was not. We fought the, the NBA for two years. I fought them. Attacked the embassy. They killed everybody in there. Vietnamese dressed in different uniforms. And they blow smoke over there. They call me from Kuchi. I had to repair what I learned before on top of that building, embassy. Repair over there. With people that are brand new, but they were prepared with you. Over there, we found all kinds of people killed. That's also another of my actions. Kushman, what? the battalion commander. But Santi was the division commander. That was the guy that saved my life because he took me back to Vietnam. Okay. Jan uh, December, remember the embassy. December 67. January 68, next year, I supposed to get out of the army, 13, August the 68, I didn't play that game, I didn't write that book, history, and de 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 uh, destiny were written, hand the books with destiny. All that stuff, I had to go over all that bullshit to be who I am now, and a new guy, and happy. I love my, my old lady, I love my, my friends, I love everybody. I am a service officer in the Post 14, Begawa, American Legion. I write, handwrite with documents. I go to Washington, BBA cases. I go to Cuba. I'm not a lawyer. I got a strong accent, but I got a wonderful right hand to write. Also, I got a wonderful finger to kill. The same finger. I pray like this. The finger that was killing, the finger that I taking care of the veterans. That's what I have. My old lady knows that. I got three boys and two girls. From those five, I got 18 grandchild. I got 14 great grandchild. A big family. Now I'm a platoon sergeant. But in this case, I cannot give orders that get done in my house. <laughs> I have to give my mouth shut. My old lady give the orders. <laughs> she, 
She ordered, I obey. I'm not a rat from Vietnam. And I was a real Puerto Rican, nice, happy, everything that happened, especially when people like you people are looking for that. What happened in Vietnam? More or less and more happened in Vietnam. We take a break. This is the basketball, the first half. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, if you want, if not, we wait 10 minutes, I go for the second half. I got no problem. <laughs> Remember, tomorrow is too late, Abby Presley. <laughs> <laughs> it's now or never, my <laughs> mouth no way. The, the, um, the, the, the second part, he's going to, I know he's going to talk about the Battle of Fukien, which is probably the most. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hice contacto conmigo, rolando y Así se hizo la. Aquí estamos todos un pelotón. Yo quiero decir que yo siempre estoy un alguien. Ok, so, uh, ¿está recording? Sí. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we left off in, we were in 1968, and you were going to tell me about a very important. Uh, battle of Fukien. Fukien, yes. The Fukien battle. Fukien. I wasn't supposed to be in that battle. I was supposed to be home in Puerto Rico, 13 August 1968. If you remember, I told you that I went to Vietnam with the 173 Airborne, Airborne Brigade. In 66 June, I came back June 67. I took a 30 day leave. I went back to the mainland with the purpose of finishing my last year and come home. But destiny changed, everything changed. I went to, to Kentucky, and they assigned me to A Company, 1st Battalion, Fire Dues. Hay mucho número. That's the real one, the Fire Dues. They had a formation with 18 people. They were waiting for more people. They were supposed to go to Vietnam. Supposed to. And they went. I wasn't supposed to go, but I went. Contradictory, huh? Okay, well, I walked to the company area, a company, they had a formation, and the first sergeant, I was outside looking at the formation. That gentleman called me, hey you, you know, hey you? You wanna say hey you? You don't say hey you, I am not hey you. Hey you. That's not my name. So he got pissed off, I think. And he walked halfway from the company formation to my standing position. So he walked to me and he asked me, are you turning yellow? Yellow, amarillo. Para el puertorriqueño, a que yo le diga que se está poniendo amarillo te mata. Es decir, de cobarde, puerco. Y a mí eso me impactó. So he went back to the formation. Yeah, hey, 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 you, come over here. I've been waiting for you behind that barracks. I go to kick the shit out of your fucking head, motherfucker. That was what really happened. I was really mad. That man, he doesn't know me. Why he called me and tell me yellow, a coward? And remember, I just returned from Vietnam. 66, 67, and uh, I left Vietnam with pain in my heart because I left some of my people back over there. You know, that, that happened mentally. You know, people, they, they, they kill people, you have to protect the, the person, you, okay. I wasn't really in my own mind. The coward mind, I didn't have it. I was still a killer and told him, I got to fuck you up. He didn't go, so I went to the company. I got a Puerto Rican from New York, his name is Vargas. Vargas got shot one time 
with a fitting machine gun, with a stripper, the bullet entered and went around. I ran to see him. You know what he said to me? Sir, that motherfucker want to kill me. <laughs> the bullet entered the, the damn helmet and went out. He didn't get killed. And he told me that the enemy was trying to kill him. What do you think? <laughs> What's a message? But that, that gentleman era the company crew. Real young, young. Well, the company, next day, after this formation, I went to the NCO club, top seven. And the first sergeant, after we got the argument in the morning, in the afternoon, went to the top seven. He was top seven like me. But when I left to Vietnam in June 66, uh, I used to go to the top seven with a special club. I was a, a seven already. So I went to Vietnam. He came back to me again. I was on the table with the lady. We were talking because I knew her before I went to Vietnam. Well, 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 the fucking Puerto Rican. Second insult. I got up, I hit 99 miles an hour with it. I hit it right here, I broke his nose and his eye. I sneak out because it was custom in the 101st that they were teaching us to, to hate each other. Which company is the best company? A company, best company, B, platoon, blah, blah. And they used to fight like crazy in the club. B company from first fight of first, a C company. So I skipped out. They had a big fight over there. I skipped out, went to the company, went to my room. I wait until the next day. Vargas came to me to, to give me a good news. Sergeant Otero, they want to fuck you up. They want to put you for the cold martian. And the old man wants to see you. So, uh, was this the, the incident with uh, Holland? Was this the incident with uh, uh, Holland? Holland. Yeah. Santa Claus. I didn't say Santa Claus. <laughs> Holland. I knock on the door. He did the same shit that Rumsfeld did to me. You know what I said? I knock on the door because suppose military courtesy, we we got a bunch of laws. And law, you have to knock on the door, you have to enter the dragon, and you have to salute. I knock, you know how you say? Come in, shithead. Cabeza mierda. Algún cabeza mierda, you don't cobarde. But they pay for the action, they paid. I got over clean. You know why? Because I kicked the shit out of Captain Holland. Destiny is running. I can't, I can't change my destiny. That was, that was the way it was, it's the way I'm telling you. And so, so this is, uh, these are were the events that led uh, you to volunteer, to... Um, I didn't have no choice. You volunteered. Okay. Yeah, no choice. I was supposed to go home. But I went to my room. I, th I tell you that an uh, angel talked to me. Maybe hallucination. They see that book would it out. I don't care. I hear voices. No hallucination. I didn't see a man talking to me. It was testing to me. Like testing? You have to go back to Vietnam. Because otherwise, these people are going to bring smoke on you. You are going to be cold martial. You attack a first sergeant. And a, and a captain, this cost you a lot, of time, a lot of time in jail. I walked downstairs, I went to Vargas. Vargas, I need help on you. What do you need? I need that you file for me a 1049. 1049 is a, is a form to book. Not many people signed a 1049. I think I was the only one. They didn't want to go to Vietnam. They were burning the American flag, the hippies, the other state. They didn't want to go. I wanted to go, 
because uh, they have no choice in this case. I got other tours always volunteer. That one was pushed. I took it. I walked to the cam uh, captain, knock on the door. You know what he say? Please come in. I said, the fuck is this guy is learning. So you have to be hard in the army. Otherwise, they're being smoke on you. So I need that you sign my 1049. And you sure? He signed a 1049. Otherwise, I go to court. But that my only window open. So I walk from uh, my company to battalion commander. They didn't know what happened over there. See, he was happy because he was to sign another one, but he didn't know the real story. Sign it. I went to brigade commander. He signed it. I went to division commander. That division commander named Balsanti, you know, Balsanti. I got the, the name in, in one of my records. So a black lady, I entered the, the office, brigade commander, to a star, came to me, I said, Sergeant, I help you. Different, she didn't call me Chilet. She didn't say, call me a yellow. I look at that lady and I say, they say, I want to see the, the old man. He'll be back in about 10 minutes. Do you want a cup of coffee? And she brought to me a cup of coffee. Simple like that. But I can establish the difference between those people and the black people. I didn't know nothing about people. Because in Puerto Rico, my father or my mother told me to be racist. Gloria Dama. OK. He's walking. And they taught me military courtesy that any time that you see from the second lieutenant to first lieutenant to a captain in the airborne, we had to, to go against the wall. Well, a, a lieutenant was passing by, I had to go to the wall, good morning, sir. That was what I taught me. That was what I learned. But this guy was a general. And the general, a first lieutenant, the courtesy for them always had to go. If not, you pay the price. KP, uh, all kind of details. I, let, I ran, I went to his left. I walked two, two steps behind him. I went, I was going to reach the door. I ran, opened the door. I entered. I closed the door. I was so, so pissed off that I was thinking, this guy, I'm going to put the same shit to me. The same thing. First sergeant, yellow. Shithead. I knock on the door. What different? It wasn't the same shit. It was, son, please come in. Like he was my father. I enter. I sit park. I sit down. And he took two cigars, Cuban cigars. Big one. He opened, he gave one for me and his. I took the lighter. I like, they said, sir, I don't smoke cigars. Tell me what you need from me. Everything that I told you already, the same thing I told to him. He looked at me. You really want to go back to Vietnam? Yes, sir, I want to go back, back to Vietnam. Why? Because I promise a captain and a first sergeant that I was going to be done to be sure that they come home in a pine box or a plastic bag. That they had a plastic bag, and then they put it in a pine box. Killing action. So he looked at me, can you wait uh, five minutes? I said, yes. He called the telephone and called. Faster than, than, than none, the guy came, with all my records. I put it on the desk, looking, looking, looking. Then this guy is going to put my ass in jail. This one is going to do that. You know what he said to me? 
I recommend that you go back to Puerto Rico. What happened to you happened to me. I came to the United States from Sicily, Italy, 14 years old. What are you talking about? I have to suffer the same thing that happened to you, calling me names. And uh, I was in gangs from New York, Italian gangs versus Puerto Rican. Y me dice que es verdad, ¿verdad? Yo nunca escuché eso, pero también me mente. That's what he told me. Okay? Why? Uh, we were young people. I couldn't speak no English. I had to fight downtown. So he was a lieutenant. He went to, to OCS. Well, he was a sergeant in the Second World War. And then he was so good a sergeant that they recommended to OCS, and he became a lieutenant. And from there, he went <laughs> first lieutenant, captain, all the way up to general. At that time, he was two-star generals. At that time. That's why he told me, OK? So please, go back to your home. You got a family. He, he read everything. That was true. I had, my, I, I had my wife at that time. I got a baby from Hawaii. Born in Hawaii, born in Kentucky. Before, I said, sir, I prefer to go to Yale. If I, what I promise is not accomplished. He asked me again, are you going to kill them? No, sir, I told you before that they are going to get killed in Vietnam. They are not good officer. They, they are nobody. They are going to kill. I'll be taking care of him. As soon as he gets killed, I'm going to take the dog tags. That, that happened. Well, I'm going to call Captain Holland. I will take Captain Holland and stay away from you. And the first sergeant to, for you better, do for you are telling me, yes, sir. He stand up, and that's it. I went to Vietnam. I departed from Fort Campbell to Oakland Army Terminal in a big Navy ship. He had four floors. We, we used to go. Sometimes I, I tell them, you know, they, when I'm talking, but all that time, I got to act for it coming to my mind, okay? He looked for the records. Uh, he took me to, 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 I mean, to Oakland, I mean, tell me that in my mind, keep the shooting. We had, we were making push-ups and running in the top floor. A big Navy ship, big, big, big. And he used to go over there and, and talk to me. Making the story short, I left from Fort Campbell, 15 December 1967. Again to me, that's why my, my tools are mixed, that's the reason. Went to Vietnam and we, uh, uh, what's the place? Bontau. Bontau was to the ocean. And that ship land at night. And adding the frosting to the cake. <laughs> That's not important. Land over there, we had attack, attack the 27th. Uh, the 15th, we took 18 days. December is almost over. So we can convoy to Fubai. The 25th Division was there, but that was well before they land. That night, the sky was all kind of light, sounds, and the soldiers that, that were in that boat, like me, they were asking me, you know, this is a 4th of July. <laughs> 4th of July. 
to me was nothing. They were 18, 19. So we land, and then the same people with do and a half. And we went to Gucci. The 27th, I left from North, uh, South Vietnam, but North, to the North, down to the South, that close to, to Cambodia, close, 15 miles. We had an attack in the base by mortars, 27th. Those people, they were lost. They, they didn't know what to do. They were running like crazy. I didn't run like crazy. This is first, the cake of the first thing, okay? I look for my people. I had my platoon, okay? Ransfield was there. Hola was there. I was looking for my, for my people. Report, no wounded in action, no killing in action, or person or a canton for. I went to the first sergeant. He was hiding in a, in a goddamn bunker line. Hey, come outside. I report my platoon. How many people were killed? How many people were wounded? He didn't know that frosting and the cake for the book. So I put that a branch in, in a week ago. January, they attacked the American embassy in Saigon. They picked my platoon, some of my platoon, some of the other platoons that they were expert repelling. They, they formed that division or that company. So we were chopper and we repel in the top of that building, the embassy. About 80 American officers got killed. They say that that's the beginning of that offensive. That's a bunch of bullshit. I was fighting north. Two years north. And those people infiltrate uh, Vietnam across Laos, that they call the Asho Valley. That was already the, the, the end this war, they used to infiltrate position north. They called sappers, S-A-P-P-E-R. They had people, they dressed black, they put a paper on their mouth, they were all black, they were Vietnamese. That was the sappers battalion. That was later what they called the 8th battalion. Well, so I was in the tail offensive already. But when I came from, uh, from, from Puerto Rico and in December, they say that I was the, the, the third offensive. It wasn't. February, the NBA came to the south. They came from really. They brought smoke in Hue. But that was the second, what they call the third offensive. Yeah, that's in the paper, in the book, in my notes, because I was in those, just upstairs and downstairs. We fought in Hue for the first time, what they call uh, urban fight in cities. For the first time, we had to go building by building to clear those NBA that were inside there. Captain Hall, General Cushman, he was about 4,000. I got the paper over there, over sea level, telling me what to do. Look to the left. Sergeant Otero, to the right. And to the right, said, fuck, motherfucker. Why don't you go over there? That the capacity began. I got to pick nobody over there. Are you coming down? You're talking to me, who the fuck are you? You're saying, you're saying Colonel. Colonel, you're a fucking coward. What, what that gringo told me, that was a fucking coward. Why don't you come down and show me how to run my platoon? 
My Platón, I wrote my Platón. Stay away from my Platón. I got witnesses, Barrett, Barrett, Holmes, all those people. That's a different area, but it's the same thing. Before you start writing, you check it out. I'm talking up here, down there, come on, go over there, go over there. But my mind got everything trapped. But first in the case is one thing, and the real thing is that we destroy the Air Battalion, nine years. Regiment Vietnam, not Vietnam. What happened to the general that helped me from go to Yale? He was the division commander. For how long? Simple. That guy left for Canberra, Kentucky in the same ship. I was with him in that ship. Do you remember the name of the ship that took you to? I was big. I remember I was big. But I have to remember that. Porque they got a place where 300 people were making exercise. Because they keep us on exercise. But that had to be around December. Before the 27th, around 17, 18. Maybe I was the December. Because we left, we left on, by, by airplane, and we uh, got in that, in that ship. Okay. If you look uh, about Vietnam, maybe you find us over there. That's a real story. But Basanti saved me from go to Yale. So I was his friend. I was grateful that he helped me. But in the battle of Fugien, he, he got a silver star medal. He wasn't in there. He pinned down two silver star medal on my chest. He was there during my battles. And silver star medal is a high medal. But when he pinned down the second silver star on my chest, he told me. Both medals. Those medals are what you're looking for now. The impact, they were to be upgraded. But what made me mad is that the, the division general, he got one medal. Cushman, the same medal. But they stole the medal from my platoon, first platoon. He know what you think. I put the guy for at least silver medal. None of the I got one. I got a picture over there. So I'm mad if you are a general, if you are Italian, if you came 14 years, you are crooked. Because you went to the service as a private. So I make a decision that that guy is not my friend. He gave me what I, had, I was supposed to have. But he stole medals from the people that were engaged by the enemy in fusion battle next to me. Battle. Battle estaba allí. Colón, I don't know. Allen, he wasn't there. That's what I call my last trap. That is a trap, because I know I was there. He wasn't there. But in the way that they are working, it looks that people are going to, to recognize that that happened. Porque Kushman, Kushman, I call him motherfucker one time. But I was, you know, in, in the battlefield. He knew that he wasn't in Fugian. He's so stupid that he was preparing everything on the ground. Allen, Bill Lux, two people, he took those people.
to his house. Sit down over there. And what do you want? Wine? Dry wine? What? Anything that you want to drink? This is done to baby. Began. That was a suspect that happened. What happened over there? Well, over there, Bill Lux was over there. Bill Lux was the person that got the written documents from Cushman and sent it to me. You saw him over there? Country code. You know what? Country code was another guy that was over there. He gave, or they gave, country code, commendation medical device. But he was there. He was the little guy. He was uh, from the south. Everything is coming out now. They denied what they earned. He got wounded. Cologne, I got my doubts. That's the only place where I get, I mean, I'm hating. If you hate, you know, you, you can't go straight. God, they go. All those people, they get to Puerto Rico to see me. They get to Begawa. They are on over there. I got two albums of Vicom Platoon. I want to, to show it to them. Because that guy, he was in my platoon. He found out about me. I couldn't remember him. I was with you. When? He said, from August 14, 68. I told you that August 13, I was supposed to go out of the army. I was in Alpha Company from December. Huh? From December. It, the first thing now is gone. I go to the cake. I left United States, December. I go to Cuchi, Division 25. Una gran división. Yo estaba enamorado de esa división. Yo estaba bien entrenado. Tenían filipinos, tenían coreanos, tenían toda esa gente por allá. Pateaban con eso de karate y todo. Y eran soldados. Tú viste que filipino, ¿verdad? La vida mía se, se, se enjeda, pero yo no pedí nada de esto. Pero yo tampoco me voy a quejar. Con todo lo que yo estoy ganando, con todo lo que yo gané, que yo no estoy en la pared que tengo en Washington. 160 mil están allí, yo no estoy allí. ¿Puedo yo pedirle a Dios más que lo que me ha dado? Dame lo que tú quieras que me dé. Y yo, yo no pido mucho. Yo lo que pido es que tengo un bisnieto mi nieto, que tiene cinco añitos, los cumplió, y me tiene loco. Me dice, papá, abuelo, vamos a trabajar, abuelo, vamos a pintar. Un nene que a los cuatro años está trabajando, recogiendo hojas en el patio, él solo. Y cuando me pide algo, que yo digo, sí, me dice, abuelo, yo te amo. Yo quiero ver los 15 años, cosa nada más yo me conformo. Eso es una... A los 15 años... Yo soy feliz, porque este nene va a ser un guerrero como yo. Va a ser un guerrero. No se cansa. No se cansa. Sigue trabajando, 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 trabajando. Y eso es lo que hace que yo viva más. Lo segundo que hace que yo viva más es mi esposa, la que esposa de él. Esa señora conmigo pasó la de Caín. ¿Tú sabes quién es Caín? La de la Biblia. Esa pasó más que Caín. Yo no era un buen esposo. No, no puede ser un buen esposo cuando va conmigo allá a Hawái, y yo la mando para Puerto Rico y me voy para allá. Y voy a Kentucky y la mando para acá. Y la última vez me dijo, mami, tú tienes que decidirte ahora o, o te va o me divorcio. Esa es la misma que está por ahí. Y la señora es, es abuela, es, es mamá, es esposa, esa es una se pasa trabajando. O sea, no quiero hablar de eso porque, porque ya somos los perdones. Hay para, me lo perdoné. Pero está ahí. Sigue conmigo. Okay, let's go to the end of the ocean. At the end of the ocean, over stop to flow. 
This is the river running that way. And that's the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean used to push inside. Okay? You don't know which one is the river. The ocean or the running water. The ocean pulled back and the river entered the ocean. And that's a game. Ocean, several river. River all over the ocean. That's what I'm saying, I'm even mama. At the end of the ocean, over the stop to fall. You cannot tell nobody where is the beginning of the ocean. Well, I don't know. At the end, neither, okay? Talking about the fluke gen, I got that battle step by step. Time of the battle. When they attack. I got four more people. In other words, that battle. I know a guy, his name is uh, John Hay. John Hay to me is my best friend in Vietnam because he was in Vietnam with the Special Forces in Vietnam on the cover war. I went over there. I met that guy just two or three times. They were training the Vietnamese people in order to send them to Vietnam. They were training a uh, type of Indians. Uh, the Vietnam, they were naked. They were experts in the jungle. They had, uh, for example, this here, they used to pull this here and put a piece of, piece of bamboo up here. And they had, you passing by, they you take the fucking chest, go all the way back. Those people, they knew the jungle. The special forces trained those people. I went with Hayes. Hayes was a sergeant. I was a sergeant. Hayes left Vietnam. I left Vietnam because I went back to Hawaii. Then I went to Kentucky. All the time, I was thinking of him. 1968. That gentleman came to me. I got a picture there with a stick. I got a stick and the Vietnamese. The Vietnamese and got a stick. He got a knife and he talking to me. Kill that guy. Number fucking ten. I was laughing. I got a picture. The, he, he didn't want that guy because I broke his leg. I broke his, his left his left leg with an N16 rifle. I had all kind of money, Vietnamese money in my rucksack. From the village, an uh, old lady left the village with t two babies, two girls and one boy. And she was crying on top of the, of the fallen soldier. I went over to, to kill him with the 45, with the angel. Appeared some time, told me, call the company. The company commander talked to me. So me, no, 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 send it back. So I took a morphine. I, that gentleman saved my life after that time. Always walking in front of me. He was a colonel with the French when the Viet Minh War. I got a picture of that guy. But when I left Vietnam, I don't know, so okay. The guy coming here is a He knows that the United States was bombing Asha Valley. I was in a fire base, rip cold. I was in that base. They told me, move out. You have to go all the way down and moved to that position. They came and they were bombing. They killed over 200 Americans in that base. He knows that happened. How they explained to the United States, I don't know, I don't care. But I got the book that Isaiah sent me. I get losing paper all over, all over. But the United States, 
made a mistake. The United States was teaching me how to fight. Okay? Conventional warfare. Conventional. A company, big company, C company, time. Blocking force. Vietnam, six people by themselves down there. Six over there. That will, the real will fail. It's not a thing seen. Nuclear weapons, no, it's not a thing. So in Vietnam, we had to learn how to fight the guerrillas. And I went to Vietnam, I told you, I want to be a tiger. But the way I say it is, I want to be a tiger like the Viet Cong. Eh? They were the tiger. I wasn't no tiger. I was a uh, conventional warfare. I could fight with that conventional warfare. I want to be like that guy. That guy, well, Viet Cong and the NBA, North Vietnam Army. The Vien the Vietnam North Vietnam Army and me, we were in the same condition. They were coming down from North Vietnam. I was coming down from Puerto Rico. How you expect me to go to the to 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 Finca? You fighting with me? I can't go over there looking for you. I had it if I go over there. I tell my kid my mother. I have a balance. They came down from Vietnam, North Vietnam. I came down from the United States, from Puerto Rico. I got a terrible fire. I got the Navy. I, I had a, a ship, I was telling you, the name New Jersey. All weapon, 14 inches. One round of the New Jersey destroyed this building, that building, and leave a crater 20 feet deep. The New Jersey. I don't know if I were, uh, Ship is a seat. You can look in the uh, internet for uh, New Jersey. That was my weapon. In order to me to call the, the ship, I had to give position, direction, and they deny the fire. If it, that fire was within five clicks, so cinco kilometers, five clicks to me. Well, I use, I use it. Uh, talking bullshit. Proximity, two clicks. I knew two clicks to the ocean, not enough to be in the field. So how I got to call five, five clicks. The enemy, when the enemy where I was, and then all that is top secret clearance. You know, they don't know that shit because I could. Okay, that happened. I tell you the truth. I, I, I'm not going to tell you what you want to 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 write. That's your job. I tell you when was my job. I tell you everything I know. I'm honest. But I became a soldier. I jump to a tiger, because the Vietcong tiger was slow and sloppy. I have used with them. I was willing to kill, I was willing to die. But I was prepared, I told you that, Da Vinci. All together, I was willing to go anywhere. I don't care if it was tiger or You got the choice. All those generals, como Balsanti, they sent me what well, they want to send me. Because I know my code. I always obey. I got how Passion got killed. I got how Allen got Passion death. You haven't seen that yet. I'm going to say it to you. I think in me, trash for my mind, because I'm 80, I don't have to learn, so I had to, to live 
e legacy. Act to it for somebody. I don't care. I tell him what I know because not too many people know what I know. If I hide that, you know, the doctor for uh, Einstein, Albert Einstein, he stole his brain. You know that? You know that? He stole his brain, the doctor, at that reason. And uh, finally, they find out, and they, here is the brain. Expert, genius. They look at, at Einstein brain, nothing different from yours, your or mine. They can find nothing. He failed school as a kid. Sabi so What is a, a brain? What is a brain? I don't know. But do you need, as a young man, put your, your own coat? Oh, okay. You are the owner of your mind. Nobody can talk with your mind. Okay. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. In the way that you people are listening to me, actually not too many questions. You can write the audio. After you are all that together, you call me again. To can I'll be, I'll be able. Because you and your body and me, we were, we are in the last train to Utah, okay? So I want to, to, to leave in good hands for you going to, to publish, you are in the university, so other people learn that isn't always not what they say. The people will say things, bull, bullshit. I'm ask you a question. Now, the first one. Why those people with the paper that I got, with the document that I got, poisoned me. On purpose, by accident. They, they want to kill the Vietnamese and the, and the NBA. But they knew the Agent Orange got a, it's a poison. They knew, I don't know if had it. Why they dropped that bullshit to us. Six million Vietnamese are asking the United States to pay to them because they were poisoned. Yeah. Once they are poisoned, that's it. They destroy soldiers that went to fight to Vietnam and Korea, other places. But they got no compassion. They don't give a shit. Or the honor. They got the honor. The big guys. That's why I wrote a little book. Humble. 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 King is a humble. Humble is el. El el que El el que está. El otro humble. El que hablan de Jambo es una mentira de la mitología. ¿Y de quién fue la culpa? De un montón de politiqueros que son unos bochincheros. Rambo, Rambo, ¿quién es el Rambo? Jambo es él, el que fue a pelear, muchas ganas de matar. Morían colosos, generales. ¿Y de quién fue la culpa? Pocos generales, pocos coroneles. Todos esos muertos que están en la pared allí, son pocos. La nación americana es mi nación, pero mi mamá me, me, me enseñó a mí lo siguiente, mi mamá, una viejita que era sabia. Amigo es un peso en el bolsillo, ¿ok? Y si está joto, cuídate, que se te pierde. Me decía eso. Pero tu familia, mi familia, con razón o sin ella, tiene que cuidarlo. Fue una orden de mi mamá. 
pero no significa que va a taparlo. Tú tienes que aceptar que metió las patas, que metió el hall, pero no dejes solo. Si no, tú no eres un buen padre. Pasó con un hijo mío. Te digo eso. La conclusión, yo no soy lo que yo me creo que yo soy. Yo vengo de un guerrero bien grande, bien grande. A ti, la gente de los uno. ¿Ok? Eso yo me lo copié de Atila. Atila decía, yo no soy lo que yo me creo que yo soy. Yo soy lo que mis uno crean que yo soy. Ya los mejores jinetes en caballo, eran allá de, eran unos chinos de esos viejos. Ustedes son jóvenes. Pero Atila destruyó el, el Vaticano, lo bojó del mapa. Atila vino ahí donde estaba Julio César, pero uno de allá fue allá con los unos y tuvieron una batalla. Pero yo soy lo que tú creas de mí. Si tú dices que soy una gran puta, soy una gran puta. A mí se no me molesta. Es decir, que soy un montón, a mí no me importa. Yo sé lo que yo soy. Yo tengo mi propia mente, mis propias decisiones y concluyendo. Yo concluyo que yo en una parte de mi vida fue un guerrero que se formó poco a poco. Soldado, esto y lo otro. En la parte de mi vida, la que está ahora, estando aquí, soy feliz. Escribí otra cosa más que escribí, que dejé a mi esposa y a mis hijos. Jambo, jambo, aparte de jambo también. Pero que soy feliz, yo no amo el dinero. El dinero es una necesidad. La amistad es lo más profundo que hay. Hay amistades de uno que son más amigos de uno que la familia. Pero yo lo enseñé a mi familia, lo enseñé a volar, pero no van a volar mi sueño. Lo enseñé a perdonar, pero no van a perdonar como yo. Yo no tengo que pelear con nadie. Con nadie, ahí tengo mi doña, 61 años, y te conocí a ti hoy, y lo confundí con el americano. ¿Lo que lo confundí? Hay un americano que está como tú, haciendo lo mismo. Pero tú eres sumamente humilde, tú eres cuidadoso, y aquel caballero tiene una paciencia que yo te la guarde. Paciencia. Por eso yo, a mí es un honor estar con ustedes dos. Yo nunca pierdo la fe en la juventud. Yo tengo muchos nietos, 15, 16, 18, y yo amo la juventud, donde queda que sea, porque la juventud va a ser lo que va a decidir el futuro. Norteamérica tiene que tener mucho cuidado. La juventud, Estados Unidos tiene mucho cuidado, aquí están los ISIS, nacieron allí, de padres musulmanes, están llegados por allí, y alguien tiene la razón, yo no sé qué tiene la razón Norteamérica, ese coreano, Acaba de, de, de mandar un chojo de cohete de lo que alcance, alcance. Ese tipo hay que darle por los chicos como el conejo. Ese tipo va a haber que agitarlo. Hay un riesgo. Pues si tú lo dejas cogiendo, nos va a bajar del mapa. Ese tipo hay que darle con el conejo en la nariz. Trump tendrá los cojones para hacerlo. Trump tiene que pararlo. Si no, Estados Unidos va a dejar de ser Estados Unidos. Ese loco. No le importa un carajo. Ese loco tiene una bomba a la madre que lo parió. Mató a toda su familia. Ha sido un placer. Igualmente, muchas y gracias. Llegamos hasta ahí. Pero puede que ser que ustedes se reúnan y si me necesitan, estoy disponible. Porque ese, ese es mi ajé guardián. Y su esposa. Él es el que me lleva, yo voy, yo voy sin miedo. Él es más, más grande.